I'm not, oh, there's a, sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to formulate my thoughts. It's for my grandmother. You're gonna need to start over because I gotta sneeze real bad. Okay. <laughs> I think it might have cleared. Oh. <laughs> okay, I was born in LA and then grew up in Orange County. Went to BYU, which is here in Provo, Utah for undergrad. So, and then I lived in Brazil for about a year and a half. And then I went to grad school in Washington, D.C. Lived in New York for a bit and then met and married my husband in Copenhagen, Denmark. And then we moved here afterwards. So we've been here for about almost eight years now, which is crazy. Yeah. I was born in Canada, British Columbia, in Vancouver specifically. But my earlier years there were up in like the kind of mountains and among the trees. And that's kind of something I think about a lot. Um, but then I had a lot of my formative years in Copenhagen and other parts of Denmark and lived there until I met Brittany. <laughs> And, and then everything changed for the good. <laughs> and now I'm in America. <laughs> How do you feel about living in America? <laughs> we grew up poor. Our homes were very bare. But they were also very messy, I want to say. Um, the living room was always like definitely a really important room in the family home where we'd all watch shows together and play games together and eat together in the adjacent kitchen. So I feel like, and we would often eat in front of the TV growing up. Um, and we also shared rooms like the kids. So we were always very close as a family. So while I don't necessarily feel the need for us all to share rooms, um, like bedrooms and things, I think it's, it's just really nice to be close. I think that's always been really important to me. In our family home. Um, I grew up filthy rich. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, pretty, pretty. I would say pretty average, but I guess that's relative. Um, and but my, I had a mother who um, inspired me to. Uh, desire like beautiful things or like know where things come from and my grandmother had beautiful things and had really lovely taste and and so I think um, knowing uh, the difference between good quality things and, and not so great quality things was always something we talked about so I think I grew up even though I, I never felt like I could have everything in the world I just knew that beautiful things was important and um, so I think I always just gravitated towards finding beauty. And I think that's my ultimate goal with everything is to, um, you know, beautiful to me, right? So like, is that idea of living amongst beauty. And, and I think that co like goes along with what I try and do with my work. It's if you create beauty and if you're living amongst beautiful things, you'll feel better and you'll feel inspired by your surroundings and therefore you'll live um, differently um, as opposed to if you're not surrounded by things that inspire you you'll um, I think that affects who you are as a person so um, I mean I don't think we necessarily our houses were not necessarily what my mom would have loved um, and I can see um, that in her dream world it would have been a little different aesthetically but um, um, so that's kind of been like more of a push to me to want to do that for ours. A typical day in the life of the Jepson household is Jasper screams, <laughs> Mommy, 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 and then when that doesn't work, Daddy, 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 until somebody comes and gets him out of bed. Brittany feeds him breakfast while I get an extra five minutes. Well, I lounge eating <laughs> bonbons. And then you drop him off at the babysitter, and then I work from home, 
he comes home at one, and then we play a little bit, and then I put him down. And about half the time he actually goes down. Yeah. The other half the time we keep playing. <laughs> or screaming. Then you come home later, we make dinner, we watch some shows, we do some work, we go to bed. I hesitate to answer this one because I don't know that I want the interior of my house to be the colors <laughs> that I love. Um, but I really like oranges and yellows. Yeah. And I, I always love when I find them in nature and I think that's, they're really gorgeous. But I really like green when it's an interior, I feel like, like dark greens. You like a green kitchen. Generally, I like things to be dark. I like it dark. <laughs> you like snow white. Like, I love bright colors, um, but when I'm where I want to relax, I want it to be as dark as at all possible. Like, he likes no light. Like, himself. when I go in the shower, I don't turn on the light unless I literally can't see. Oh and goodness. And if I'm at home, I turn off the heating and I turn off all the lights. Like, in the wintertime, it's 63 degrees. Yes. Anywho, is that it? Your colors. <laughs> what, what are my colors? Should we play this like the newlywed game? No. Yeah, what are my favorite colors? Brittany <laughs> loves dark and cold. <laughs> <laughs> no, truly. I'm not going to play the newlywed game. Okay, so... I like... I do like yellow a lot. Um, I, I think I mostly like it for... Um, Clothing though? I don't know. Have I lived? I don't think I've ever lived in yellow. But also, I went to interior design school. I was always taught that yellow in a kitchen makes you hungrier. That's a McDonald's thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Like red, like warm colors makes you hungrier. So you want to suppress your hunger? I don't know. I don't know. That, I think that's We want to be our true selves. <laughs> we want to eat all what? the time. <laughs> um, yellows, I love pinks. I love, I mean, I like warmer sh shades, um, but I also like a lot of blues. I like bringing in that. I don't know. I like mostly all colors if they're done correctly. Correctly meaning I think they're done correctly. I mostly love a lot of patterns though, like patterns on patterns and colors and colors and like let's do some color combinations, you know what I mean? <laughs> So, as far as entertaining, I feel like we've always wanted to entertain groups of like 10 ish, but we haven't really had the place for it, so we're excited to be able to do that here. Yeah, we've been married for 10 years and we always want to have people over, and we. <laughs> we've had a lot of people over, but not. But it's usually never it's like two to six people. Yeah. And then sometimes for birthdays, like for Jasper or things, we've done 10, but that's been kind of bonkers. And during COVID, we love to have like raves, you know what I mean? Like, we like to put the lights down low and have a ton of people inside. But I love the idea of having like a big table that people can gather around for board games or for like a Thanksgiving dinner. Like Settlers of Catan and like Dungeons and Dragons. We never play any games because Britain doesn't like to lose. In life? That is actually not true. That I love to lose. Very much true. Very good loser. Not a good loser. And uh, so that would be nice. Uh, but I would also really like like a kind of a guy's part of the house where I can bring the guys and do guys stuff. What's an example of guy stuff? You know, like, um, well, so it needs to be cool, like cool as in like not hot. Like, like you know, cold? Cold, dark, with like lots and lots of retro video games. Oh, okay. And nerdy things. Where's that part of the house going to be? <laughs> if you, do you want me to decide that? No, that's why we're <laughs> answering this question. Yeah, so I, I like both having that option where I can entertain like my close friends and then also kind of bigger social groups. Okay. Um, I love the idea of having people over. I would love like a formal area where we, like I would love a long table where I can use like pretty plates and have beautiful table settings and stuff, which we haven't really been able to do ever. So then I get really bummed out and then I don't do anything. Um, so that would be ideal. Um, I mean, at some point in life, whenever that could happen. Um, yeah, I don't know when that will be, but that would be nice. 
me first? Uh, yes, because uh, your answer matters and mine does not. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. It's mostly true. Um, so, I love, I love um, like more old type, like um, like a French, older French or French country mixed in with like a Swedish Gustavian and a lot of folk elements from Scandinavia, like Swedish or Danish, um, or even like Russian folk is really interesting, or Ukrainian is really interesting, that part of the world. I love bringing in those elements. Um, English right now, like an English um, countryside. I know, I think it's really in right now, but I've always loved it. So like kind of a, a fusion of like old world, uh, European, but like mixed in with, I like modern elements. I love modern lighting, um, but not always. I don't know, it has to be the right mix of styles. Um, and I think that balance is something that is really good at, and I really love that too. So I think um, us working together to find that like right balance of styles will be really exciting. But tell me about yours. Yeah, so what I like, um, in my dream scenario, which I'm not in any way expecting, is like bare, unfinished concrete walls and floors. That and is my worst nightmare. Like neon, like transparent plastic um, stuff, whether maybe a desk or a chair like that. And yeah, like kind of minimalist. Kind of stuff, yeah. Oh, so maybe we'll have like a bomb shelter downstairs or something. Some, yeah, sure. It's kind of like like the cute, like the DR concert hall, you know, in Denmark, yeah, okay. where it's, you know what I mean, with the concrete walls, but then it also has like some cool bright colors. That's and literally my worst nightmare. Yeah, but uh, I love you, so <laughs> I will not force my idea of the perfect home <laughs> into the narrative. But, but so, since we're asking the question, what's your style? That's mine. Okay. Yeah. Um, so also... I don't love old stuff. Who doesn't love old like stuff? Like antique -y things. Oh. Like things that look worn and old. Not my favorite. Okay. I, don't, I don't mind it. Like say a table that looks like an old like workshop table or something that looks like it's actually like a cool old table. So something new that actually... That's no, no, I wouldn't mind something that's actually old. I don't like things that are new, that are meant to look old. I don't mind some old things, but I'm not into things just for the sake of antiques. Um, also, so we want to put Lars in the basement. Yes. Because we have about 1,500 square feet down there, and I think it'll be pretty nice. But I want to do that one, whereas this one maybe it's a little more European slash concrete. Um, that's a little generous, but anyway, down there, I want to do like for Lars, I want to do like. You're just saying concrete because I have like concrete, yes. not because you're actually going to do concrete. No, <laughs> that will not happen. Yeah. Um, I want to do like bright colors, but like fun and the the brand of Lars, like real, like crazy colors, and I want to go nuts down there. Um, for the mood of the home, I want it to be playful yet um tasteful so you come in and, and you see like see to me when i see pattern upon pattern i don't think whoa you're crazy i think oh my gosh i can't believe you put that together and it's amazing however i've learned that people think i'm crazy when i use different patterns and such so i want people to come and be like wow like a wow moment but also like a this is fun and lovely and whimsical and um something unexpected i guess you should never ask Brittany, does this outfit work because <laughs> she'll always say yes and it's not always true well though i i'm i mostly think that things work but i think that people don't have the confidence to pull it off that's mostly what i think so thank you for answering my cute little observation about you with a <laughs> sly little jab <laughs> back at me. Okay, yeah, I guess you're right. Uh, the vibe that I like in a home is for it to feel private, I think. And you love privacy. I like so privacy much. and 
yeah, for it to feel just cozy, I think, like, I love in Denmark when it gets cold in the winter, some people who go inside and they have candles and it's just a cozy place. I think it's nice for your home to feel relaxing. But I also like there to be cool, cool things in the home that inspire. Like I think it's cool to have some fun art that, that we both like. There aren't too many things that I'm tied to because I don't think we've ever really invested too much into the things we own. Um, I mean, there's a couple, like, I love our Swedish clock. I'm pointing to it right now, you can't see it, but um, I got that a couple years ago. And um, I have a couple pieces from my grandmother um, that I would love to keep because of um, the history. But other than that, um, like, nothing, like, means so much that I, want to keep it like um, unless they're like accessories like books or little things i love little things you know like um trays and dishes and stuff like that but like furniture we haven't really collected like crazy things we came over from denmark with two suitcases each so that's literally <sighs> everything we have everything you see here is something we've acquired since we've lived here yeah I not not really anything that I feel like I have to keep. <laughs> not a lover of, of objects and things like that, but uh, yeah. Just people. Just people. Yeah. Living in a home with someone like Brittany means there is nary a day where the entrance doesn't have a unopened box or an open box or a box that's been emptied and is now just kind of chilling. So it's nice to have space for, maybe to have a space where all those things go instead of just kind of flowing through the house. There's always projects everywhere. Um, so that would be nice. So storage space is important. Uh, yeah, it's important. <laughs> I'm sensing a lot of heaviness. There's a little bit of bitterness. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, so we bought this house and there was literally nothing in it. Like, there were subfloors and like there were walls, but we still have no um, window covering. So it's a pretty much an empty box. And it, what that means, there's nowhere to put anything. Like, there's no sweet built ins or um, like organization right now is non existent. And coming from someone who's not super organized is kind of a recipe for disaster. So we're doing the best we can with what we have, but we need like places to put things and um, we need systems. We have, I don't know, we just need help. Because we're not the most organized people in the world, it's important to have like a lot of storage because if yeah. we need to be super organized to get everything in there, it'll not, it won't be in there. Yeah, so right now it's just an empty box. And so we're like here, like, I hope I can find this again, you know. Anyway. <laughs>